everyone. I thought I would have a go today at doing one of the pictures from this book, um, the Castle Arts Beautiful Flowers Colouring Book. Now I did a flip through of this um, together with um, the other three books that they have produced, um, which you may or may not have seen. But um, now I thought I would have a proper go. What I did do is when I did my flip through, I coloured in um, a tiny bit of this book. Um, it was, um, um, there. I just did a little bit of that and I finished it. And there's using Castor Arts pencils, which go down very well on the paper, which is absolutely what you would expect. However, um, I've got my polychromos today. I'm trying something different. Now I've done what they advise and chopped out these color reference sheets because we're supposed to use these to help us do the picture. Now as a little note to Castle, if they're watching, who knows? Um, it would be lovely to have this as a PDF that we could see on your website so we could make it a lot bigger and really see the detail because that is quite small. Obviously, this is an A4 page. It's quite, quite small, but it is just a colour guide. I don't think you're supposed to copy it exactly. This is done in a watercolour painting. It's probably hard for you to see. Um, you might be able to see from there. So I'm doing it in pencil, so it's not going to look identical. But this is the autumn bouquet, so I thought it would be a fun one to do today. It's um, as we're coming near the end of autumn. So I'm just going to slip the book underneath my pencil, so I've got a bit more room on my desk. Now on this side, there's a photo in black and white. See, it'd be nice, if, I mean, that could be a big photo. And it says, warm, rich, colorful flowers. This autumnal arrangement truly captures the gorgeous and vibrant colors of the season. So I'm just going to, um, I haven't got enough room. I've got to put my pencils on the edge of there, but it does keep the page flat. Now, they've got a border already drawn on the page for you and a little title. So in theory, you could cut them out and frame them. You would have to really take the whole spine out of the book because you couldn't see that bend, so you can't get into it properly, but I'm sure you could do that. So I'm just going to show you this picture and talk about what I'm going to do. So we've got this is a sort of sunflower, I guess. We've got some sort of bronzy here. We've got nice autumnal leaves and some sort of rose hips and berries and things. So it looks rather pretty. I'm going to colour using similar colours. Um, I can leave that in shot like that, around the wrong way. So you can see it a little bit. See what I'm copying. I think it might be slightly useful. Can't let's get it all in shot. There we go. Actually, if I move it all this way a bit, I can come in a tad closer. Ooh, we don't want to cut that bit off. Is that still in shot? Yeah. Right, so let's make a start. And start with this middle bit. Um, and get going. Now you can see it's sort of marked out with all the different splodges of the different colours. What I'm going to do is make it quite simple. So I'm going to start with my lightest brown, which is going to be my nougat. Okay, and I'm going to do the whole of the the bit that I'm going to do is the centre. I See, I'm trying to find that bit in my photo and I can't see it. So I'm just going to have to improvise slightly and I think that's okay. So I'm going to... Um, just as I say, colour this all in the nougat first and then come in with other colours after. I think what you have to remember with these sorts of books is basically what has happened is someone has painted a picture and then they've made it into a colouring page. So it hasn't been um, designed specifically for colouring in the first instance, which means that it makes it slightly different method for colouring it really. Um, Rather than someone like Johanna Basford drawing the line art and leaving it to you to come up with all your colours and things, it's just been done in a very different way. So um, some people find that they don't like it this way. Some people are happy with it. To be honest, I prefer to have line art that's specifically designed for um, colouring rather than a picture, you know, it's the same as some grayscale books where someone seems to have taken an old photograph, grayscaled it, and then popped it into a colouring book. And it's like, it's not really, it can be really pretty, but it isn't what that picture was originally designed for. So it isn't custom made, should we perhaps mean? I'm going to grab my dark brown, uh, burnt umber, 
and the centre part is really dark, you can see it there. So I'm going to go into this centre bit and just put a darker area. Now I'm going to start doing a slightly round and round type movement with my pencil because it's sort of seeded and if you look in this picture there's a lot of splodging going on. Now if, you, if you're good at painting, I'm also going to do a bit around the edge. Can you see how it's darker around the edge? Um, if you're good at painting then you might find that's better in this because um, this one is painted so you might get it looking more like the original um, if that's what the effect you're after. I'm not going to try and match exactly. I'm not going to be able to do that. You have to be a little bit laid back. You have to remember that this picture here is just a guide and unlike the Thomas Kincaid books where it's right beside it when you show someone your picture, your finished picture, they never have to see this bit. You've cut it out of the book, throw it away. Um, so they won't know that it's supposed to be or, you know, that you've got any sort of guideline to how to colour. So there's our sort of darker bit. Now in here there's some sort of greenish colour. So I'm going to grab my sort of brownish green, which I think is the olive green yellowish. But uh, and uh, I might take a few of these bits that. Oh, so I just heard a noise. I thought it was my camera stopping, but it's a lorry reversing. So I'm going to take some of these splodgy bits that have been drawn in, and fill these in in the green. Just so that it look, you can see what the purpose of the lines are. To be honest, I would have rather that that was just a circle. Um, or a circle and a circle rather than all these little bits of lines but that's just my personal taste I'm going to grab another brown um, the um, walnut brown and I'm just going to do a few bits of different brown and I'm going to be a bit random because I think that we've got these sort of splodgy circles in the picture I'm just going to mark them out a bit like that. Now you could um, delete the line art if you want to um, with a white pen or with some gesso. I don't, I'm not, I'm going to use the dark sepia. I'm not very good at doing that so I'm not going to try and show you. Um, I'm going to go around this centre line instead with this dark sepia and then just fade it out to make it look um, it disappears the line a bit and it will just darken this area a bit like that and I'm going to do that on all the lines I think it will look a bit better but yeah as I say if you if you know how to get rid of the um, dark lines by using white pen you might want to try that but it's, I've never had much success with it to be honest, I find that I've tried using white acrylic paint and it just covered the line. I used it too thickly, I couldn't see the lines at all. <laughs> that was a waste of time. I've tried using, um, I haven't got any gesso, I'm no good at painting evenly either. So some lines were faded out and some weren't, so it looked a bit weird. Um, and um, I've tried just using white pen over it and it chips off or it just looks white and it doesn't look right. If you try and colour over it, it doesn't always work. So, But there are videos which show you proper good techniques. Proper good. That's good English, isn't it? I think you know what I mean. That um, it could be worth having a look at. So what I'm doing is I'm colouring over all of these black lines and just fading that colour around it a bit either in or out, to try to make it look a bit less like there's a black line. And I'm hoping it will sort of help us get our texture in there a bit more without it looking like there's just lots of lines. These lines are also quite square, which is a little odd because in the picture everything's very rounded, so I'm going to try and sort of make them look a little bit more rounded, these sort of sections somehow by <laughs> sort of doing that so 
So it's the um, the Christmas book in this series that I was really excited about. And uh, there are some Christmas cards in there which I'm going to have a go at um, sometime. There's one that's really easy, which I'm going to do as a video. <laughs> Take the easy option. There's one that's... There are a few others. There's some, there's some of them are very detailed. I'm not sure I'll be able to do it in a video because I'll be needing to put my head so near the page to see them. That... Um, that it might be tricky. Oh, that reminds me. Hold on. I need to um, put something on my Christmas list, um, which I'm just writing down. Um, I want some magnifying glasses. I've got, I wear specs anyway, but my bifocal part is not magnifying enough for this sort of colouring type thing. Really, I tend to end up looking underneath. So, uh, Right, I think that's looking better. I'm going to go back in with my green and just do a bit more green sections and then a little bit of the walnut brown just to finish off. It's quite rough and ready, but I think that's okay. Hopefully that it'll work. Right, moving on to yellow. Now you know how scared I get colouring in the yellow, but I've got to be brave. Now I'm going to, if you look at this yellow, you can see it's some orangey yellow as well as pale yellow. I'm going to start with the darker colour, I find that easier, and then move into the lighter yellows. I'm not, this is quite red, but I'm actually going to probably just start, oh, it's a loud train, with um, the dark cadmium orange, which I think is probably quite close to that, and but only do a very little bit, because I want to make sure this doesn't look orange, it actually looks yellow. And I'm not too worried about exactly following the picture, because um, I know how I want to colour a sunflower. Now that bit isn't really in the picture very much, but I'm just going to basically, I think, go around every edge where they overlap with this orange so just trying to work out where the petals are overlapping each other I can't work out what that is it's because I've got my book around the other way to the picture it makes it a bit complicated for me but anyway I've decided I'm not gonna look at the picture anymore I'm just gonna do my own thing I'm just gonna go around the edges of each one and see where we go from there. So this is almost going to form our um, edge between, it's all shadow really. That I did it a bit wrong, so I had to go over it, but never mind. It'll just be a bit darker there. I don't think that matters. There we go, and I'm going to put a little bit just all the way around the edge of the centre part. Just to uh, show that there would be some shadow in there. You can see if you look at the little picture that there's a bit of darker bit around the centre as well. They've got one edge darker than the other, but for me that's too complicated. I'm making it easier for myself. So now I've got another orange. This is the cadmium orange. What I'm doing is I'm going to slightly fade because I don't want a sharp line. So I'm going to add a little more. And now I've marked out where my orange is going. It's much easier. I've got, you know, I've got started. I can just extend the areas that I've drawn in. So that's really nice. Um, we're not going to be able to, I'm not going to get rid of these lines in the same way I did in the middle. They're just going to show. And I don't mind that in colouring books. I usually let the line show. So that's what it's going to happen here. Now these pictures have no backgrounds. It doesn't mean you don't have to, you don't have to do one. If you want to do a background, absolutely, of course you can. I'm not going to because it's going to take too long. It's going to be a long video anyway. So I'm just going to extend that out a little bit. 
so uh, no no background here for me but I think with this autumnal palette I'm not sure what color I would do um, don't know what I think would be really useful castle <laughs> is if with this book by the way the paper is really nice with the poly um, is what I would do is um, is I'm going for the um, dark cadmium yellow now and we're really going to start getting into the proper petals you know really getting in there with some yellow like that and then fading it a bit like that um, what I would like is to as as a beginner I would have liked to have had a picture coloured in pencil as well as paint. I mean obviously some people paint but for us pencil colourists it would be nice to have a picture coloured in pencil with a list of the colours that we used. You know or some, um, some tutorials from the artists who made the pictures as to how they did them, you know, how they did the original bits. But uh, anyway, perhaps that's why they've sent their books out to people like me, so that I can show you. But uh, I think sometimes when you've got a photo like this, it can make it more daunting. But uh, we'll get in there. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a tickly throat, and shall I tell you why? Because I've just eaten the most enormous piece of chocolate. <laughs> I am the naughtiest girl. <gasps> well, my children did have chocolate with their breakfast, and they will be, I suspect, um, a lot <laughs> during um, December, because um, they um, have. A, they told me they don't want a normal advent calendar with the sort of cardboard windows, which I absolutely adore, because mum, they're boring. Why would we want that? We want chocolate. They're all the same, Mum. I'm like, are they? <laughs> I'm not aware that they are. Yeah, they're all the same, Mum. We want some chocolate. Like, okay. <laughs> now, I don't normally buy them loads of chocolate, but they often have just a little bit a day with their breakfast. So I think, oh, it's only a little bit. I think that's actually a leaf. But now it's a petal because that's how I've coloured it. I'm not looking at the picture to check. I'm doing it my own way. Sometimes you just have to push out and do your own thing. Okay, now we're sort of getting there with our yellow. This is the cadmium yellow and I'm almost sort of thinking this could be my last colour yellow. I'm shaking the whole desk, colouring this. I'm going quite pale towards that edge of the leaf. And I'm going to do the same thing on the others. Sort of fade them towards the outside. I'm looking forward to doing these. Um, I was um, going to do them sort of. There's a lovely bronze in the um, in the uh, prismas, which would uh, look really nice for those. But I'm just going to have to improvise with what I've got. The colour here I've got nothing like that. So uh, I don't know. I shall have to make something up. But anyway, it's interesting. I don't associate sunflowers with autumn. I don't know why. But anyway, it's very nice autumnal palette. Yellow, lovely warm colour. I like it. Now I am actually, I have to admit, pleasantly surprised at how easy this has been to colour. Considering when I looked at this book to start with, I thought it would be extremely hard to, uh, but once I fathomed out about how to make that look a little bit better, I'm actually finding it quite easy. So that's good. Very pleased that, uh, you know, and also I have decided to relax and chill and not worry too much about trying to make it look exactly like that. That's not, I, I can't do it, you know. I don't, if I had paints, I might have a better chance of doing it, but also it's quite small. So uh, trying to make it, I can't see it. 
so I can't make it exactly like it because I can't see the detail and perhaps that's a good thing because it means I have to be a bit more creative myself rather than trying to copy across every detail. It's also easier, I find, than trying to copy exactly something. So I'm just basically finishing off all of these petals with this yellow. So I'm going over what I've done and just fading it towards the lighter side. I think they look quite fun. I That one goes the other way to all the others. Oh well. Now see these lines are quite distinctive. So I'm going to get my cadmium orange and just try and fade them in a little bit more. Because I think they look a bit too dark. So I'm just going to do that so that it just blends into... Actually they blend really nicely on this paper. Which is good. Never be too sure. I, the paper isn't particularly toothy at all, and I think that helps me with these because it means that I can smush it a little bit, which obviously um, isn't something that Polly's normally do. So that's quite interesting. But you can see how it can layer up quite nicely. I'm not sure how many layers we would get. I'm not good enough to be able to sort of tell, really. It's certainly good enough for me, for what I want to achieve here. I haven't done the tip of that, so I'm just going to grab my um, dark cadmium yellow to do that one. There we go. Just blending really, getting rid of those harsh orange lines and we should be done in a minute. And then we're going to do these sort of internal lines. Which I feel like need a sort of brownie um, colour. I'm going to go for probably, yeah, probably the green gold. Oops, I don't know, you can't see that. It's, it's The light's all wrong today. We'll probably use this green gold a fair bit on this page, actually. Oh, excuse me sniffing, but I'm going to use it in here. On all of them, just the same. Because these are sort of dips in the leaf, in the petal, I mean. Uh, so it just works like that. Now I am really tempted to try and get rid of these black lines with a with a yellow Posca pen, but my yellow is so bright that I think it would look odd. So I'm going to leave it. Right, let's move on to these. I've been looking forward to doing these. Now we can see them here. I know what these are. They're a sort of um, seed case. Um, where's my nougat? The nougat I'm going to use for the centres of these because I think it's the right colour. Um, where's my sharpener? Here we go. It's going to sharpen it and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it slightly differently to the picture. Not massively. But I'm going to put a darker line around the edge and then fade it towards the middle. And I think what that will do is help to eliminate this line a little bit. The um, harsh line. I notice in um, they're actually these lines are actually grey, not black. Which um, I think I haven't got a colouring book. Oh, I have. If I compare it to this Rita book here, it looks lighter. Can you see the print is paler? But I think it could be even paler. Uh, it's difficult, I realise, to get the balance right because people need to be able to see it. Not everyone's got the most brilliant eyesight. I don't, that's for sure. I could cope with it paler, but it doesn't mean that other people can. So I'm sort of fading it towards the middle a bit. Although it might end up making it look like it sticks out when I know that they stick in. 
stick in, but they're holes. <laughs> oh dear. Anyways, I'll carry on. Yeah, I think it would be nice to have an indication of, say, what colour pencil, um, castle pencil, would be the right one for this sort of colour. Because actually, the colour of that, the outside bit, I don't think I have any pencils that colour. A sort of very light beigey brown. I might have a hole behind that colour, I'm not sure, but, you know, it's quite tricky. I think this is quite a close colour, but I basically need a lighter shade of this, which I don't have. So we'll see what we can come up with in a bit. But just get all these little ones done, nearly there. Now, if you colour on top of the lines, that helps fade them back a little bit too. If that's something that you want to do. Now, I'm going to do this bottom part because if you can see from the picture, it's darker. So I'm just using the picture as a guide really to how to colour. I want it to be a bit lighter towards the middle though. I'm going to make that dark as if it's a little dipped in part and that outside dark. And make it lighter towards the middle, although dark under this edge here because I want to make it look as if it's um, a bit more rounded and if there's more shadow on the edge that can help with that illusion but of course we have to also allow for these dips in as well. We could use a second colour to um, make that even darker but I think we can do it with this one like that now top it's almost a grey brown um, I am going to try the Bistra and I'm going to use it really lightly Okay, I've just given it a sharp and don't want it to be mega sharp because I'm just going to use it on its side, hold it quite far down the pencil and just do a really light layer like that. I think that's how I'm going to approach this bit. And don't worry if you go over the edges a bit into these other shapes, it, you won't see it because it's so pale. This will be okay. And then we've got the one behind, which I'm starting to think of. It's a little bit redder in its colour, which is nice. So I'll have a think in a minute. There we go. Now it might be a little bit darker at the bottom. I'm just going to add an extra layer. I'm not actually looking at the picture. I'm just doing my own thing here. I'm just going to fade that up. Like that. That'll do. Right. This one. Now we have, if you look at the picture, quite a nice coppery colour to it. So I am thinking maybe um, we'll start with our brown, burnt ochre, sorry. Um, I might go over the whole thing with this as a starting colour because I think it will be a nice base for the whole thing. And then we'll think about because I'm doing it lightly, I can add layers on top, so it should work fine. Now, actually, we need to go all the way down into here, because this is the sort of this bit, the base bit. It's not really the base, but anyway, <laughs> I know what I mean. Um, so we'll do the whole thing. As I say, we just a light layer to start with. Now we need to start thinking about these bits are dark. So I'm going to grab, um, do I have a walnut brown? Yes. I'm going to use my walnut brown for all these around the edge bits here. 
These actually look bigger than in the picture, but it doesn't matter. The idea is just to make it look like it's shadow. So I'm just going to go through all of these with the worn up brown. And then we'll do, think about these pieces. They're actually different colours. The centre one seems to be a more reddish colour than the others, but I think I'm just going to do them all the same colour because it's more fun and easier. More for easy. Now I think this colour we might do some of the base with as well because it is quite a lot darker than the rest. Now this brown is actually not quite the same as the one in the picture but I'm not worried. As I say, it's, I'm just going to try and use the picture as a guide to work out what's going on with the artwork because sometimes it's tricky to understand what the um, what, what's supposed to be what and to give me a guide for colour rather than trying to colour it exactly. Now here I'm a bit, what's, where's that going? So that's that one. So it's just got a little bit underneath so I'm going to put that in there and then that bit. Because they are all surrounded with a darker bit. Very different to this one. But that's okay. I always think these look quite Christmassy. Okay, now I want to go quite a lot more red. Can you see how much more red that is? So I am going to use my Sanguine. Okay. Oh, I haven't done that bake. Never mind. And go over the top of everything with that. And see how it looks a bit more like that colour, doesn't it? Not over the edge part though, I needed to do that with my dark one, I'll come back to that in a minute. I'm trying to not have it looking liney, so I'm just going to go back over. Now yeah, I realise that this centre one is much redder than the others. I don't know how well you can even see that little picture, but I'm going to make them similar because I like it. This is the attitude I'm going to take with my, next time I do one from the Kincaid book, Thomas Kincaid, is that I'm going to use the picture as a guide for colour and then just have fun with it. Um, right, now for me, that still looks extremely flat, unlike that one which I think has more depth. So I'm going to use my burnt ochre pencil to try and make these look a bit more rounded to start with like that so I'm making the outsides a bit darker and I think it just brings them to life a little bit more I mean, obviously it's a still life they're not alive but there we go now for these dark bits which to me don't look just look like circles I'm going to get my um, that's not what I want. I want my, where's my dark sepia? Here we go. I'm going to get the dark sepia and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dark edge there and around here and hopefully it will look a bit more like it's sort of shadow rather than just a line. See, colouring over that line to disappear it a bit, I think, helps. A little bit. It's not brilliant, but it's helping a bit. So I'm just going to go all the way around all of these lines. And... Uh, Hopefully, it will look a little better. A little bit more like this is, we're looking down into this bit. Oh. And that, um, yeah, so this isn't just a circle around there, it's actually some depth. I think it's 
is better. And the fact that I know what I'm supposed to be achieving I think makes it easier to fool my eye. I don't know whether it's always hard to know whether that effect's going to work when you show other people. But uh, I do my best. And uh, hopefully it sort of, sort of works. Uh. There we go. Now, oh, we haven't done this bottom part. I don't want this really dark pencil. I'm going to go back to the walnut brown to do this. I want it quite dark here so that you can differentiate between these two and the fact that it, there'd be shadow here and I can lighten it a bit towards the middle here but like I did with the other one a little bit of dark under here over the top of that line darker down there too. Okay, um, I think I'm just going to tidy up that. I'm going to grab the um, burnt ochre again and just tidy up. I'm not, I'm happy with these bits. I'm just doing this outside bit. I just want to make it look a little neater, really. be a bit darker on this bottom part. I'm not sure really. Just trying to yeah, make it look a little bit more even. And the colour becomes more intense as well, which is always good. There we go. Now we have these um, leaves. And they're, they're done in a sort of browns and greens and reds, you can see. Um, quite tempting to keep this pencil that's in my hand to do them with but I think I won't I'll change the tone slightly just because um, we don't want it to be the same as this so I've grabbed my terracotta instead which is a slightly different tone and what I'm going to do is do the whole of it in terracotta and then add a few colors over the top of some parts of it I think it's that's the easiest way for me to do it I find with a brand new picture in a different style, you know, I have coloured something from here before, apart from the little tiny bit on the front. Um, it's easier for me to sort of block in a little bit and I get used to what the line art is like and helps me to think about how to approach it sort of thing. And if you look at this, there's mainly, this is mainly the base sort of colour. So uh, I think it will work. I have, by the way, put a couple of pieces of A4 paper behind on this page so that in case there's any ink transfer from the writing on the page behind onto here. Um, and there is some um, ink, tra ink on that piece of paper, but I've used that piece of paper before. So it may not be from this particular page. So I can't say for sure whether it would, but I would, i do it with every book. Um, I'd never risk it. Now, what's this line here? Is what I am wondering. Um, uh, we have a petal coming out here that isn't depicted. That's that one. That's that one. And then there's a little one here, but it hasn't been drawn in quite right. I think I'm going to ignore that bit of line art because it's not drawn, it doesn't look like the petal. So I don't know if you've seen the adverts castle, I've brought out adverts, it's for their castle book, you know, the, I mean the colouring book with castles in it, um, it's quite a fun advert. It may not be showing across every country, um, it's not, 
I have, don't watch a lot of telly. I haven't seen it on telly. I think it's just a social media advert. I've seen it on um, Facebook and it's quite fun. Um, and a man walks across, I think Colour with Claire shared it actually, so you may have seen it. I'm sure most of you follow her as well. Um, it shows him walking on a in a smart house and then... Hmm, what's going on there? Oh, it is a fat leaf. <laughs> um, and onto a beach, he's sitting at a desk and painting a castle from a distance in the in the book. Um, I don't think that we have to travel to each castle that's in the castle book and then go and paint them from there. <laughs> That'd be a bit much, wouldn't it? Right, so we've done the basic. What I'm going to do next is choose some leaves that I'm going to colour in different colours. I'm not going to necessarily do it this way. Um, it's easier for me to do it more randomly. So I'm going to use this um, olive green yellowish first. And I'm going to do this leaf very green okay and then a bit on this one a bit on this one and a bit on these like that and on this plant I'm looking roughly it's a green leaf I don't even know if it's on this side or the other side but I'm going to do a similar thing like that so it's sort of we've got a sort of greenish area I've gone massively out of the lines hey ho let's see how well it erases oh quite well I think I erased a bit of the line art though but that's let's try there no oh yes eventually look it starts to fade but that's okay um so a bit of green I want a bit of reddish, it's quite red here. Um, let's use the Venetian red and do some red. So the tip of this one, isn't it, is quite red. So let's do that. That's pretty. And then mm, let's do a bit of red down here. I'd like to see how well someone could do this in paint because I think it would, you know, it would match up better. But maybe it doesn't need to. But I'm just interested to see. I'm going to do that one in a bit redder too. Like that. And then a few down here, this one. See, it's very rare for me to do this. So it's fun to do different colour on one plant and quite random. You know, I would normally, um, I was gonna vary the color. I might start with green, go through to red and yellow and orange or something. I wouldn't do a little batch of green and then a little batch of red. So it's quite fun to do it this way. Right, I'm going back to my terracotta now and I'm gonna finish it all off by, by going over in a heavier layer because I want a more intense color of terracotta. And I can go over, because we, our original layer was terracotta, I can go back over and it will work and blend into these other colours a little bit. And it should all help it to tie together even better. You could use more colours, you could use some sanguine, you could use some darker browns. It's completely up to you, you don't have to try and copy what I've done or what's on the page this is just to give you a guide so that you know how to sort of approach the picture and what it looks like. Now, these polys are going down well. I have to say I'm not surprised because polys are such a good versatile pencil. Um, I'd be interested and they're also um, similar. I use soft touch on these already, um, the castle arts, and they're similar in some ways to those, so I'm not surprised. I'm not sure how well prismas would work. Um, the paper is quite smooth. They might be, but I don't know. You know, I haven't tried. I might try them on, um, I don't know actually, because the Christmas cards, I was gonna say I might try them on the Christmas cards, but they're very small. So prismas might not be the good choice, you know, because of the detail. I tend to use prismas for 
pictures there have lots of detail, or I say end up sharpening and sharpening and sharpening. You all know what it's like if you have them. Anyway, we'll finish that there. Um, I'm gonna, I just feel like it needs a bit of darker brown, so I'm just gonna grab my walnut brown. Now let's grab a, ah, this will do nicely. This is the Burnt Sienna, so it's a slightly orangey brown. I'm just gonna do like a little bit in this. I feel like it needs a bit of darker brown in places. Try and blend it in a bit better. There we go. Maybe just fade in on this leaf like that and a bit on the bottom of this one. Just a little bit to make it look a bit different. Uh, maybe here. Find it interesting dotting the colour around. Right, I am really thirsty. I'm going to go and grab my coffee and come back in just a minute to finish off the rest. So hold on a moment. Right, that's better. Um, now I've had a coffee. <laughs> now we've got these two little here. In fact, there's three of them, but they're all slightly different colours. This one is a pale brownish, slightly orangey brown. I'm thinking um, burnt ochre I'm going to go for. Um, so I'm going to make a start on it. I'm going to do it quite lightly just to check that I'm getting that colour right. Now, the picture isn't drawn in, a, in the way that I'm going to colour it. So uh, I'm going to do it my way. So I'm going to make it a bit darker on each edge and fade towards the middle so that it looks more rounded and even on this circular part I'm going to make it darker around here and then less as we go in also a bit darker at the bottom and less as I come into the middle make it look more round. Now we do have these lines drawn on it obviously. Um, what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to do these tufty bits in a darker colour because that's how they're drawn on here. Gives me a bit of a clue. i use my burnt umber for those and I'm also going to run that burnt umber along this line here just to make it look like it's sort of a section of the seed pod and here and here. I'm going to put a bit around there too. There we go. And here I'm just going to put a light layer across and then sharpen it <laughs> and just separate off those little sections. So I'm going to treat each section separately, do it dark along the edge and then lighten it slightly towards the middle like that and do that with every one. So, the, so it sort of separates them out and you can see each individual piece which I rather like and it helps to fade back those lines as well. There we go. I'm making that look dark because I think there'd be some shadow just in there. Okay, so it doesn't look the same as that, but it's similar. I'm going to do the same here. We've got this colour. It's a greeny, it's a sort of grey green. So I'm going to grab the um, earth green, which I think is the closest match I have, and uh, do a a vague um, colour and then we'll see where we're at. I think this bit here is a, a sunflower petal that we've missed so I shall deal with that in a minute. So you can see it's a similar-ish colour. 
matching colours isn't always that easy. Um, just do your best and it doesn't have to be exactly right. I think tying colours together is actually more important than matching them to the how they should look, if that makes any sense. So I think if you are doing an autumnal palette, as long as you've got your brownie greens and um, that sort of thing, um, browns, greens, yellows, rather, rather than worrying about getting it exactly looking the same. Right, so I've now got my juniper green, which is a slightly darker version, I feel, of this. And I'm going to, again, I'm looking away from the picture and I'm just going to do it how I want to do it. So I'm going on the edge of these to make them look dark on the edge fading towards the middle to try and make it look a bit more rounded I'm trying to work out what this is it's not in the picture so I've got absolutely no idea so I'm just gonna ignore it and color over it I think I'm just gonna do that section it off now with this one again darker on the edge Oops. lighter towards the middle like we did on the, exactly how we did on the other one and I deal with those lines in a bit. It is different to how it's in the picture. So I'm just doing my own thing. A bit darker down there. Like that. Um, these bits I'm going to do a little bit darker up here. And now we've got these lines. My green pencil isn't really dark enough for those. So I'm going to grab my dark sepia. I'm just going to give it a sharpen. So here he is, dark sepia, and just go over the top of these lines to make them look more like pencil rather than printing. And it just sections off our plant pod. Ooh! <laughs> whoops I'm getting a bit over enthusiastic there there we go now this tufty bit is quite pale it's almost yellow um we could do it yellow let's grab the cadmium yellow do it yellow I think it might look a little bit odd I'm gonna um, go over it with a brown after wow we'll do a bit of yellow here too because look this is a bit of sunflower that I've missed and there There we go, and I need a. I'm going to use the um, green gold to uh, go over that because it's very bright. I need to sharpen. Oh. Now, this is quite a long video. I would normally have split it into parts, but I don't have any space because we're coming up to um, um, getting our. Christmassy ones. I'm going to grab the burnt sienna and go over the actual lines with it. Hopefully, we'll just fade them back a bit. Make it look more like there's a shadow in there rather than just a deep line. And the same down here. It's making it a bit darker than it should be, but I think it's okay. I'm going to miss out those berries and go to this one and I'll come back to that because this is the same as these. We'll do the berries in a minute. So this is a sort of slightly yellowy green colour. Um, I think I'm going to use my May green, if I can find it. There it is. To start with, it isn't going to be exactly the right colour, but I'm not worried, as you can tell, too much about that. Yeah, as I say, I can't, couldn't split it into parts because just got too many um, um, autumn videos to show you before um, before we move on to December which is good now this top bit is sort of yellow like this bit so I'm not going to do it now this is quite a lot um, greener than that but it's okay I want to put down quite a good thick layer now the way this is colored 
is so that these bits are lighter. So I'm going to try and do that. Um, I want a brownie green. What have we got? Yeah, let's use this. This sort of olive green yellowish, I think it's called. This one, number 173. And I'm going to go around the edge of each of these. And hopefully it will sort of um, pop them out a little bit. I'm doing this while my pencil's sharp because I want a really dark to find line. And now I'm going to go to start with the edge. Like that. And then just sort of gently fade that a bit and fade it out from there too like that so this one I'm doing slightly differently because it's drawn quite differently I can make that quite dark down there though dark along the edge bring it in a bit from each side There we go, it's actually had the reverse effect and the um, lighter colours look like they're set in rather than out. Never mind. Right, um, that tufty bit I'm actually going to do in green gold to start with. I'm sure that's its official name. I think it's actually the flower as it's, I don't know. Um, but it's got some dark areas, so I'm going to grab my walnut brown and I'll give it a sharpen actually. So there's my walnut brown and I'm going to do the edges and the overlaps firstly. So the shadow that will be in here where it's overlapping. And then just a bit on the edge and fade it in a bit. Let's give it a bit of shape and shine. We sort of want to separate out these bits a bit too because they're tough. There we go. Now let's go on to these berries. Yay, berries. Now the berries are very bright red. Um, what have we got? Um, I'm thinking I'm going to use the, no, that's a bit pale. I'm going to use this, which is the Scarlet Red. I'm just looking, 118 Scarlet Red. And I'm just going to do over the whole berry in this. Apart from the white shine mark. To be honest, I don't like it when the white shine mark is drawn in. I'd rather draw it in myself with a white pen. But, um... Obviously, we're all different. It it just gives you a guide as to where it should be, I suppose. But, uh, as I say, I prefer to draw it in myself. So I'm going down quite hard, as you can tell. We want an intense colour to our berry. And this, there's another one down there, isn't there? Ah, that's a berry! It's not a leaf at all. Hmm. Oops. <laughs> so, that's a berry, that's a berry, and that's a berry. Right, I'm going to try and erase this. It doesn't look very round. I want my erasers playing it. They may look slightly faded because um, they've got the yellow underneath, but I think they'll be alright. I'm sorry if you copied me wrongly. You could just leave it looking like 
flower if you want to. Now I don't like colouring just a berry in just one colour. Um, I'm going to grab a darker red, in fact a very dark red, and do a little more. So this is the Middle Cadmium Red. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Actually add all the way around the edge and then a bit more to the bottom. And just fade it up a little bit as I go like that. So a bit more at the bottom. And we need this shadow in here as well where they're overlapping. And then just take the colour up a bit. So all the way around. And then just up from the bottom. And again a bit of shadow there from that leaf. The funny shape, that's why I thought it was a leaf. We can get it working, look, which is rather good. Leaves okay, and then I'm going to get the red again, the um, scarlet red, and just blend that in. So basically, just go over the top of the bits that aren't that darker color just make it even more intense. Now I've gone over the white bits, I'm going to go over them in a pen at the end. So there are berries. The leaves with these berries are quite yellowy. I'm going to start with my green gold and uh, do them all. I'm just trying to figure out what's leaf and what isn't. Well, we know that's a leaf because there's the outside line got a stem here too. These are actually all leaves, there's no gap. There's a colour in all of this. Um, got any more of this sort of colour? Yeah, we do. So I'm going to go for Down here, look, all these leaves are quite similar to this colour. I'm going to use it as a base for all of them. And then some of them will be darker than others as we add our other colours to them. Green gold. I used to think that, I remember watching someone who said they always use green gold as a base for all their leaves and I didn't understand it because I found that once I put down a layer of green gold I couldn't get any other colours on top. That's because I was pressing too hard. You just want a gentle layer and then you can get other colours over the top. I'm being very careful here because I'm not quite working it. There's some green leaves as well. That's a green leaf which I've coloured, uh, these, uh, or oh, I've coloured all the green leaves yellow, never mind. Um, <laughs> we won't work, we'll pretend that they were never supposed to be green. Um, that stem, got the berry, I've got a leaf behind. So I'm just trying not to colour my rose hips in gold. And we could, we can sort it out, but. I'm going to try and do it right this time. And mm, so that must is that that's a berry. So this is a leaf here. That's one of the green leaves, but I'm actually going to not do it green because it's the only one that I haven't coloured in yellow. So I'm going to just colour it like these, or else it's going to look a little bit odd. So I am slightly improvising there. We'll start. Well, that's part of that leaf. And yeah, this is a leaf here. Okay, 
So we've got all our leaves marked out now, which is good. Now we'll go back to these. These are probably our lightest, but if we look at them carefully, there's a bit of green in them. I'm trying to choose the right green. I think I'm going to use this green again. This is the olive green yellowish. And I'm going to improvise a bit and make this edge where, where it overlaps and a bit darker here like that so there's that one this one I'm going to make really dark as if it's set back a bit and then a little bit of green on that one a bit on each edge of the stem a bit here again and a darker line where it touches this one so it'll look like this one's more in front um, I quite fancy making it greener in the middle like that don't know why I do the same with this one and then this one oh, we've put a bit of shadow there against the berry this one would just take the green up the leaf a bit across the side and there we go now let's look at our picture I think that'll do now this one has more brown um, sort of colours I'm going to grab the um, burnt sienna because I think that is the best one to use um, for this and I'm going to sort of use it on the edges even though it isn't in the picture just because I want to and here and then how it is in the picture is it's being used along this line and then sort of to define these bits which I think is a good idea like that we'll use a bit underneath there we'll just put a tiny layer a bit up here like that, I'm. it's not how it is in the picture but hey, this one has got the dark layer sort of up this edge like that and then sort of do it like this again I'm just sort of improvising a little bit why not there we go this one um, it's sort of up the middle but it doesn't really look quite the same as this there we go um, that's a bit of that it's, this is the last one in this cluster I'm just improvising on this one doing it my way There we go. Now this cluster has got more greens in it. Um, but sort of brownie greens. I think I'm going to grab this green. I'm going to do it differently. This is the chromium green opaque. So it'll look a bit different. And I'm going to... In fact, this leaf looks a bit red in the picture, but I'm going to do it green. Because I think it sort of belongs to this cluster same as this one is actually green in the picture so I've got to make it up so I'm just doing that this one I can have a green stem um, green right down the centre part and then I think we'll have green down the edges like that Oops. and then mm, on each of these lines we'll just take the green up a little bit I think just try and fade it a bit that's a bit of a harsh line there just want to try and make it look so that that leaf is on top like that now here this one is actually a lot more orangey and so is that but we did it green never mind well um we'll, we'll just do it green I'm just 
going to fade that up a bit and then there, fade that one up a bit and this one, I'm just trying to find it in a picture, it's quite dark. Um, I'm going to make it dark on this side, it's actually dark on the other side because we've got that dark green there, I want it to stand out as being a bit different. Oh, it's a train. Do you like the sound of trains okay now for that one i think our green gold needs to be a bit more intense so i'm just going to grab that and go back over this side it's a really pretty color and i'm just plastering it on really I'm not supposed to do that with polychromes are you doesn't matter. It's not. It's not damaging my paper. It's quite good paper. Well, I think it'd be interesting to um, try out some watercolor pencils and see how the paper holds out. Now these, I think, we can get away with doing this, and maybe that'll be enough. I'll see. Now we've got our rose hips. Now they're really similar in colour to these. I'm actually going to use the same colours. Um, so the scarlet red colour 118 to start with. Maybe I'm being a bit lazy in using the same colour. But hey. Um, now these top bits are red as well as the berry. We'll put some definition in in a bit with our darker red. Now on these we've got quite a big shine area marked out but actually if you look in the picture it's not quite that big and some of it is slightly yellow. So, um, let's see. So I'm grabbing my middle cadmine red now. And we'll start with this one, this whole berry here. I'm going to just start on the edge. Take the colour slightly in. Like that. <clears throat> now this one, the, the ends are darker. Got a bit of uncutted leaf there. Which I'll address in a minute. So I'm going to do all the ends a bit darker. Now we're just, oops, we won't draw. Well, I'm just going to getting distracted by the fact that I want to colour that in my green gold. Right. Let's delete that mistake. Oh well, it's not going to come off, never mind. Right. Let's get this um, middle cadmium red on here. So we do it all the way around and then fade it towards the center. I'm going to do it up the edge of here as well. Like that. And this one the same. So coming down from the top where we did those darker tufty bits and bring it down. And then around that edge there. I'm going to come back in with the scarlet red to make it look more um, intense like I did with those. I need to give it a sharpen. Now I feel where these are overlapping there's not enough shadow. I might address that in a minute. But I just get this down, get it really intense. It's nice to have this really bright red, I think. Now, with this, um, as I say, this centre bit, some of it's a bit yellow rather than being 
white so I'm just grabbing my dark cadmium yellow to do a bit of yellow on there hmm. we'll leave that for a bit we'll grab our dark sepia and do some of the um, shadow there'll be some shadow here where these are overlapping like that up here look in there. Now, hmm. I would think there would be some under there but there isn't in the pic original picture but I'm just going to put a bit in um, I'm thinking maybe down here and there I'm doing a bit too much, but getting a bit carried away, perhaps. <laughs> I do like my dark sepia, though. Gosh, my voice is going up in colouring for a long, old time. Just going to put a bit more in. Now I'm going to get my white pen in here in a minute. Let's just do that overlap there. And just do those... Um, do the white bits and then I think I'm going to end it. Um, I could do something a bit more with the centre of the sunflower too, but we'll see. So I've got my white poster and I'm going to go over the areas that's supposed to be white on these because I made them a bit too red and also I want to get rid of the black marks. I know I was saying, oh, I'm not very good at getting rid of black lines, but this is a bit different because I'm not going to colour over it. It's just making it vanish, effectively, like that. Same here. Go over all these, even though the yellow's there. I'm going to get rid of it all. So I think it looks a little bit odd. Right, the centre of the sunflower... This outside bit, it's a bit lighter. And I'm going to put a few dots in here. And they won't show up massively, but just a little bit. I'm just taking my artistic license a bit far, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, I'm just going to block them a bit. They're not too bright. There we go. You could do that with yellow as well. Right. There we go. Let's some turn this round so you can do a proper compare. You can see, hang on, how my version, sorry, isn't identical to that one, but I've had lots of fun. Um, I've learnt a lot. I could do more. I mean, I'm looking at this um, here. Can you see there? It looks like there's a white bit. I could draw some a bit of white. I think I'm going to do that there. On the edges of those but um, I could probably work at this for another few hours and uh, and you know get it looking more like the original but I'm happy with how it looks um, with the for the amount of effort that I've put in um, I am going to try one and white out the black lines because I think it would benefit a lot but not on this one but uh, so there we go I hope that helped you a little bit um, I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I had fun with it. I'm actually quite surprised because I'm not always a fan of having to try and copy someone else's. But I think once you give yourself the license to do it your own way, but just use the picture as a guide, then it can become a lot more fun. So there we go. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. Um, we haven't got many autumn pictures left. December, Christmas is coming and I will do some out of the um, Castle Arts Christmas book, which I'm looking forward to as well. But for now, thank you so much. Um, please um, remember to like and subscribe and um, thank you and happy colouring. <laughs>